morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed nationwide weather update for March 27th, 2025. Low pressure dominating the country right now with a deep low pressure system located over the Northern Territory funneling in rainfall and moisture through Queensland and now into the northern half of New South Wales. Significant rainfall observations have been reported once again widespread through Queensland overnight with totals between 40 to 80 millimetres around the Charleville area and totals as high as 100 millimetres along the Sunshine Coast and then totals up to 50 millimetres into the northern half of New South Wales. I've also had widespread rainfall totals up to 150 millimetres up into the far north Queensland, especially through the southern parts of the Casbury Coast, with 114 millimetres falling at Halifax overnight. We've got developing low pressure systems over in Western Australia as well, but we're going to start off this forecast update. Take a look at the one over in Queensland. You can see it's a giant system right now with the low pressure centre itself still located in the Northern Territory, just outside of Jervius here, uh, towards the uh, east of Alice Springs. This system here is a very broad system and it is funneling in a lot of moisture, as you can see. Uh, and if we take a look at the radar imagery associated with this low pressure system, plenty of showers and thunderstorms overnight, a very nice band of thunderstorms moving into the northern half of Queensland overnight that has dropped some significant rainfall accumulations up there. But for the most part, the people up in the northern half of Queensland, the rainfall is going to be easing off throughout the remainder of today. There is still some good rainfall expected for the southern half of Queensland, especially into the southeastern corner of the state, and I'll be getting through that in the next couple of minutes. And plenty of good rainfall also expected for the northern half of New South Wales, and some good showers still expected up in far north Queensland. Queensland as well. Let's jump into that rainfall forecast right now. It's a complex one, so stay tuned for the details. You can see, again, that low pressure system dominating the scene over in the Northern Territory. It is a little bit more trophy based this morning, but it is still a very broad low pressure system. Plenty of rainfall still funneling in on the eastern side of the system here. Showers and thunderstorms widespread across uh, the northwest in Queensland, and plenty of showers and thunderstorms expected up the Cape York Peninsula today. The heavy falls will be concentrated on the southeastern side of the system here, and as this low pressure system broaden, uh, broadens itself out and we see low pressure extending through Windora out towards Thumagaminda. We can see that rainfall uh, really beginning to build along the border of New South Wales and Queensland. So locations such, uh, such as Charleville, Wyandra, Kanawala, Wanaring, Burke and Lightning Ridge could all be in for some pretty significant drops later on today, especially into this afternoon with some very heavy showers and thunderstorms expected throughout tonight and into tomorrow morning. Heavy falls will continue to move uh, in the uh, motion of this low pressure system here. So as it continues to build itself up a little bit further and then head towards the southeast, we're expecting showers and thunderstorms to develop along that easterly front here. It is going to actually behave a little bit more like a frontal system through Friday and in towards Saturday with a band of showers and rain expected to be wrapping in from the north on the uh, eastern side of the system here, but moving steadily towards the southeast, if that makes sense. So if this low pressure system is located, for uh, example, over Windora uh, by tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be heading in that southeasterly trajectory down towards Kanamala and Thumagaminda, south of Wyandra. Uh, the rainfall will be stripping in from the north and wrapping around on the northern side of the system here and on the east eastern side of the system and then rotating into this low pressure system here. So wherever the low pressure center is, if you're keeping an eye on the synoptic charts or even the satellite imagery as well, because I know radar imagery is not available out in this part of Queensland, but if you look at the satellite imagery, you'll be able to make sense of where the low pressure center is just in this uh, sort of area through here. Uh, and if you also cross-reference that with wind observations, which you can find on windy.com here, uh, you can see that there is just the general rotating motion of these wind speeds here in this general area of Queensland. So you can say safely that the low pressure system is over but Dory, uh, anywhere towards the eastern side of this low pressure system is where the bulk of the rainfall is and you can see plenty of cloud activity, thick cloud activity over in the eastern half of Queensland and that's where the cloud shower and thunderstorm activity is. Through Friday night and Saturday morning the rainfall is going to pick up dramatically for southeastern Queensland and it's going to meet a bit, a bit of a moisture funnel that we're expecting to develop over in the southern parts of the Coral Sea and as such some significant rainfall can be expected across the Sunshine Coast through late Friday night and into early Saturday morning. We're talking about six hourly totals between 40 and 80 millimetres with isolated spot accumulations up to 120 millimetres possible on the Sunshine Coast with heavier falls expected in towards Brisbane through later on uh, Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon. There's going to be widespread showers and thunderstorms. Now this rainfall is not going to be streaming in in a thick shower band. It's going to be coming in in that more sort of showery, thunderstormy type stuff. And whilst lots of locations can expect good rainfall because for the most part this showery and thunderstormy stuff is going to be very widespread, there will be locations that do miss out and there will be locations that pick up substantial more. The chances of rainfall at this point is looking very good across southeast Queensland, so I think a lot of locations are going to be more on the side of inundated as opposed to disappointed on the rainfall side of things, and we could be looking at uh, accumulations up to 120 millimetres through Saturday around southeast Queensland. The rainfall clearing out late Saturday night into early Sunday morning, and you can see the rainfall for the most part clearing out of Queensland through Sunday. Big time rainfall accumulations possible though on top of what we've already seen uh, over in this part of Queensland, and I'm going to go in, uh, into detail in those in just a few moments but I just want to bring
briefly touch on the situation over in New South Wales as well. So like I said this morning, showers and thunderstorms widespread uh, across the northern half of the state. So Naring, Bork, uh, Lightning Ridge all picking up some pretty significant uh, drops throughout the uh, past 24 hours and rainfall is expected to continue in those areas as well. The radar coverage over in New South Wales is generally speaking pretty good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what rainfall we do see on the radar imagery throughout the remainder of today. For the most part, we should be seeing uh, some pretty good rainfall, especially around the Renaring and the Burke sort of area. You can see showers and thunderstorms widespread through tonight, extending in towards the uh, more sort of central regions of New South Wales through tomorrow morning, and we'll be seeing some widespread moderate falls through Friday throughout New South Wales as well. Again, coming in the form of showers and thunderstorms, especially some pretty significant thunderstorms are possible through tomorrow night uh, through the northern half of New South Wales around Cobar, Burke, Walget, Lightning Ridge and Coonable. We could be seeing some good thunderstorms in those areas, but again, for the most part, the rainfall is going to be on that showery side of things, so same deal with Queensland. Some locations will hit it uh, rich with the rainfall and other locations will miss out, but considering the widespread nature of this event and how long it's going to be persisting for, not so much into New South Wales, but especially for Queensland, the vast majority of locations have reported a hit in terms of rainfall as opposed to a miss, and I do imagine that that is going to be the case uh, sort of to a lesser degree through New South Wales, but I imagine a lot of locations are still going to pick up that hit in terms of rainfall. And then through Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon, a bit of that, that, or that bit of that frontal system moving through New South Wales with some heavy falls expected across the southeast of the state, and we can't be riding off falls up to 100 millimetres through Saturday for locations such as Malakuda, Naruma, Oladola, and even as far north as Wollongong as well, and in towards Captain's Flat and Canberra, we could be seeing some relatively significant rainfall accumulations in those areas as well. So certainly worth the airtime, that's for sure. Anyways, let's talk on those rainfall accumulations right now and see what we're expecting throughout the remainder of this week into this weekend. You can see rainfall accumulations already looking quite respectable across parts of Queensland. More showers and thunderstorms expected into the uh, Channel Country uh, throughout the remainder of today. We shouldn't be getting more than about 25 millimetres though through parts of the Channel Country. And then into the central west outside of uh, Mackay or inland from Mackay, we're looking at rainfall accumulations anywhere between 50 to about 150 millimetres. Again, dominated by showers and thunderstorms through Claremont, Emerald, Jericho and Tambo. And whilst the rainfall in these locations just listed is going to be more of a hit and miss type thing as opposed to just steady falls expected, we can't be writing off some pretty good uh, rainfall accumulations, especially if we take a look at what's happening on the radar right now. More showers and thunderstorms moving through those areas and certainly can be expecting some good rainfall accumulations, not just throughout the remainder of today, but into tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening as well, uh, right throughout the remainder of this working week, good accumulations expected there. And then down on the uh, New South Wales, Queensland border, we're expecting accumulations again between that 100 to 200 millimetres, isolated falls up to 250 millimetres are possible, and we can't be writing out uh, rainfall accumulations over the next 72 hours outside of Wanaring up to around that 250 millimetre mark as well. Uh, can, uh, can realistically expect about 100 millimetres of rainfall, same deal with Lightning Ridge and we'll get as well about 100 millimetres expected there. And then anywhere between 60 to 100 millimetres expected for Cobar, uh, Coonable, Tottenham, Dubbo, those sort of areas. And then widespread forces between uh, kind of that 10 to 50 millimetres can be expected throughout the remainder of the northern half of New South Wales. Accumulations will be light though as you get further out towards the west and Broken Hill really can't be expecting anything. They do need a bit of rainfall out there, but again, none really on the forecast. And like I said, widespread falls between 10 and 50 millimetres, picking up to about 20 to 70 millimetres for the more coastal regions of New South South Wales with isolated falls up to 100 millimetres expected into the southeastern corner. Rainfall accumulations up to 100 millimetres are also expected around the Sunshine Coast as well. You can see on this forecast widespread falls between 80 to 120 millimetres can be expected here through Maroochydore and Caloundra. Brisbane itself could expect up to about 70 or 80 millimetres of rainfall. I reckon the accumulations across the Brisbane metro area will be closer to about 30 to 40 millimetres throughout the remainder of this weekend. Um, and then rainfall accumulations down on the Gold Coast will be somewhere between 40 to 50 millimetres. For the most part, a lot of these locations be, will be receiving relatively similar uh, accumulations to what the forecast models are suggesting, and that is going to be on top of the up to 100 millimetres that we've seen on the Sunshine Coast overnight. Uh, widespread falls between 25 and 75 millimetres of the Sunshine Coast, and widespread falls between 10 and 50 millimetres of the southeast corner of Queensland around Brisbane and the Gold Coast. So again, some pretty healthy rainfall accumulations overnight. They're not expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. The rainfall, as you can see on the forecast modelling here, is going to ease off temporarily throughout the remainder of today into tonight especially and then into early tomorrow and then it will pick up again by the looks of things through Friday night and into Saturday morning very much picking up through Saturday morning by the looks of things as uh, some heavy falls expected between about 6am and about midday across the southeast corner of Queensland and the Sunshine Coast especially plenty more rainfall to come that's for sure the rainfall in southeast Queensland driven by that moisture highway that we're seeing developing in the Coral Sea right now which you can see on the, ra uh, on the, on the radar and satellite imagery we have had that kind of moisture bands beginning to develop here along the coast 
coast line and some heavy falls have been reported overnight but for pretty much every location between Cooktown down towards Mackay. Rollingston with another 100 millimetres in the gauge, Halifax with another 114 millimetres in the gauge and Townsville has picked up some significant falls right now so let's get into the details surrounding that. It's just been a steady stream of showers and thunderstorms overnight and you can see some of these showers are packing a punch here with rainfall accumulations up to 40 millimetres an hour as they get themselves along the coastline. They're also relatively slow moving as well so once they get themselves over a location there's really not much that these locations can do apart from just cop the rainfall that they've got. Uh, some pretty significant falls as a result have been reported and more rainfall is expected throughout the next couple of hours into the next couple of days. Again showers and thunderstorms widespread through North Queensland and far North Queensland throughout today. They're going to be streaming in from the northeast by the looks of things which is in stark contrast to the direction of the wind speed so it is going to feel a little bit weird but that's far North Queensland the weather situation that we've seen up there so far this year has been quite strange and very very wet that's for sure. Through Thursday and into Friday so today and towards tomorrow we're seeing these rainfall showers steadily head towards the southeast here as you can see that low pressure system dragging that moisture towards the southeast so by tonight we're going to be seeing rainfall ease off up in far North Queensland and around the Townsville area and pick up for locations between Bowen down through the Whip Sundays especially through tomorrow morning. Heavier falls can be expected around the Mackay and the Serena area. Rainfall accumulations will be heavier times down through Ogmore, Yapoon and Rockhampton through tomorrow morning into early tomorrow afternoon and expecting moderate falls to then begin developing between Ogmore down through the Sunshine Coast and down into the southeast corner of Queensland by tomorrow night and into Saturday morning. You can see locations such as Rockhampton, Gladstone, Agnes Water and Bundaberg could all be on, on the receiving end of some mildly healthy rainfall accumulations here and you can actually see on the rainfall forecast throughout the remainder of this week and into this weekend uh, widespread falls between 70 to 100 millimetres can be expected along the north and the south central Queensland coastline. You can see good rainfall accumulations up into the Whip Sundays with falls up to 120 millimetres there. Townsville can expect up to 80 millimetres of the stuff. Same deal with Mackay there with isolated falls up to 150 millimetres expected inland from Mackay into some of the mountains there. But Rockhampton can see about 100 millimetres on the forecast uh, in the next couple of days. Gladstone could see up to about 70 millimetres of rainfall. Same deal with Agnes Water as well about 60 to 70 millimetres of rainfall there. Bundaberg between 50 and 60 millimetres could be a little bit more than that and Fraser Island as well could see up to about 60 millimetres of rainfall. So in stark contrast to Queensland's rainfall problem it's kind of Rockhampton, Gladstone, Agnes Water and Bundaberg that haven't been on the receiving end of this torrential rainfall so far this wet season and in terms of soil moisture anomalies they are sitting slightly below average at this point in this part of Queensland uh, especially as we push the forecast back a little bit earlier on in the forecast period here you can see it is a little bit dry outside of Rockhampton and Ogmore at this point here so this rainfall looking very healthy and it's kind of the only dry spot that we're seeing at any point in Queensland southeast northwest wherever you're talking about it's the only dry spot that we're seeing in Queensland right now so it is highly unusual especially for this time of year that these locations are dry this rainfall will be very welcome indeed and I'm sure everybody in Rockhampton Gladstone and Agnes Water can testify to that and it's not coming through from showers and thunderstorms it's going to be steady cons uh, consistent rainfall so I've got a great degree of confidence in saying that at least 50 millimeters can be expected which is a great start for this part of Queensland it's not going to solve all of their rainfall shortage problems at this point but it is a great start the rainfall so I imagine a lot of people looking really forward to it at this time and up in far north Queensland as well rainfall accumulation is not looking too bad over the next couple of days you can see the convective forecast models are the ones really going ham on how much rainfall we're expecting but more showers and thunderstorms expected so that's what we generally see with the convective forecast models and then rainfall generally speaking looking a little bit lighter as we head out into the 14 day rainfall forecast period here you can see 14 day rainfall accumulations up to 200 millimeters on this forecast model uh, solution here we might see another rainfall event pipe up into the or the, into the later parts of the first week of April into the second week of April we can't be ruling one out that's for sure at this point here showers and thunderstorms expected to be widespread through the first week of April and then showers from the southeast expected through Saturday and Sunday the 5th and 6th of the month respectively before things calm down a little bit up there there's still a good month and a half of consistent showers and thunderstorms expected for far north Queensland as well so don't put away the umbrella yet don't put away those sandbags we could still be seeing some significant rainfall through April and April is tipped to be much wetter than average and we still do see some good rainfall accumulations through North Queensland in April so again don't get complacent at this point here we still have at least a month of the wet season left before the rainfall fully leaves us for good. Anyways let's talk weather conditions up at the Northern Territory in the top end of Western Australia we'll get to those in just a second uh, over in Western Australia but showers and thunderstorms widespread through the Northern Territory and good rainfall accumulations have been reported as a result and then over in the Kimberley region of WA as well we're expecting this tropical cyclone to finally begin development uh, and you can actually see it on the radar and the satellite imagery right now a really robust low pressure system beginning to develop at this time here and I am a little bit concerned now because we do have a very small tropical cyclone here in the making it is a tropical low right now as per the Bureau of Meteorology's latest guidance but uh, just looking
looking at it on the satellite imagery with the radar imagery and the wind observations that we're now starting to see up in northwest and western Australia, it certainly looks like a tropical low turning tropical cyclone is in the making here. And I am actually now a little bit concerned for the Kimberley coastline and I think people up there need to be paying very close attention at this time. Now whilst there's no threat to major population centres such as Broome, Fitzroy, Crossing, Halls Creek, Kununurra or Columbaroo, there is a threat to locations along the northwest Kimberley coastline between Broome and Columbaroo, so pay, pay close attention over the next couple of minutes. Developing tropical cyclone throughout the remainder of today and into tomorrow making a landfall tomorrow night by the looks of things. It's going to be a rapidly intensifying system and a very small system at that. So this system will be putting on knots at a rate of knots. It's got another 36 hours or so over the water. So if it can get itself together very quickly in the next 12 hours, we can't be ruling out a Category 2 or even a very weak Category 3 strength tropical cyclone landfall. This sort of system does happen every now and then. It is a bit of a weird system how it forms really quickly, landfalls really quickly. And it's a bit of a surprise system. And to be honest, the best kind of comparison that I can draw here is Tropical Cyclone Tracy. A very small system caught the models off by uh, off uh, guard and as such it was able to rapidly intensify because it was very small and in a very favorable environment. Trace is a bad example because it was going for a major population center but it is it gives you an idea of how these small systems can intensify offshore from WA and the Northern Territory. They've got very favorable conditions ahead of it and this system here has had a good start to life. Another system that's had a good start to life is Tropical Cyclone Courtney. I knew it was going to have a good run over in the Indian Ocean but I didn't expect its run to be that good. It's now a category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone with more intensification expected throughout the next couple of days and this system is likely to get up towards category 4 strength tropical cyclone status over the next couple of days especially through tomorrow weakening will kick in by the looks of things later on this weekend as it heads into a slightly more unfavorable environment but it's still going to have plenty of uh, good time ahead of it you can see only that weakening beginning to kick in as it heads a little bit further south through sunday the 30th of march and in towards monday and tuesday again remaining a very small system here it's the same deal with this tropical cyclone developing off the kimberley coastline courtney is a very small and powerful and compact system and as such it's been able to rapidly intensify fire overnight into a robust and powerful tropical cyclone. Again, it is a very good thing that these tropical cyclones are both not a threat to significant population centres. And whilst Broome could be seeing some significant rainfall, and we'll also be seeing some pretty significant rainfall moving into the Fitzroy uh, River basement uh, through parts of interior Western Australia over the course of the next week, especially through Saturday and in towards Sunday. Some great rainfall expected into interior parts of WA, uh, south of Lake Argyle, but through Balgo, Kuakara, uh, and some of the indigenous communities in this part of uh, Western Australia, we could be seeing some pretty good rainfall in these locations here through Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Uh, but apart from that, the effects to land are going to be very minimal from both of these tropical cyclones, just considering the fact that one is well out to sea and obviously not going to be impacting land. And the other one is going to be impacting perhaps the most remote part of Australia into the northwest Kimberley coastline here. So again, very good news that it is a small and compact system. I don't think there is any need for people in Broome uh, to prepare for a tropical cyclone. Uh, or definitely no need for people in Broome to prepare for a tropical cyclone. And even people in Columbia and Derby, whilst you could be seeing some strong winds and some isolated heavy falls throughout the remainder of this week and into this weekend, especially through tomorrow night into Saturday morning. Some gusty winds are possible here and there. Again, I don't think that there's any reasonable need to prepare for a strong tropical cyclone. The impacts are going to be very mild in this part of Western Australia. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today on the weather forecast situation. Again, still nothing happening across the southern half of the nation through Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia and Western Australia, apart from the stifling heat over in WA. It's criminal that last night was 27 degrees Celsius overnight in the Perth metro area. It's criminal that that is temperatures that we're seeing this late on into the summer season. So not very impressed with that, that's for sure. But again, that is all that I have time for today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run the show without them and their support is much appreciated. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.